Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good to see everybody out this morning on a beautiful Lord's Day. Yeah, it's getting a little cooler, but we can't change that, so I'm just going to go with it, right? But it's good to see you out this morning. I've uh, got a lot going on. I'll be making some announcements in just a few minutes, but it's good to see you here. And uh, somebody mentioned earlier, hopefully some of the cold weather will take some of the germs away and get back on our feet like we want to be and hope to be. So uh, let's go to the Lord in prayer as we open up this morning. Father, again, we just thank you for who you are. We love you. We thank you for loving us. You watch over us. You're with us. You meet our needs, Father. We thank you for that. And Father, we come to meet with you this morning in your house, your people. We pray that you'll open our hearts, our minds to, to what you have for us to receive. This morning for your word, through song. Father, so many messages in song that just touch our hearts. And hope through prayer that as we pray for communion with you and able to talk with you. And uh, I was talking with Brother Cody earlier. We need sometimes take time to just sit and be still and let you talk to us. And we thank you for those times. So, Father, just be in our service today. Be with each phase, with each person, with each family. And we do have a lot uh, coming up and going on. Father, we just put you first. Always have you to lead and guide us in all we do. So just be with us. Open our hearts to your word. In Christ's name, amen. Amen. Good morning. Good morning. If you have served in any form, fashion, or any way in the military, would you please stand? Vietnam, class of 69. You know, we have all men here this morning that are standing, but if the men and women who have served our country had not done what they did, we would not have the freedom that we have today to come to the church and to worship in the way that we find fit to worship God. Amen. Everyone else, please stand. Turn to number 708. I'm going to sing the first and the last verse. visit with us 
And so uh, please fill those up if you will and you can put them in the offer plate or as you leave today, uh, you can do that. Uh, I guess the biggest thing coming up this week is our Thanksgiving meal on Wednesday the 16th, which kind of stuck up on me. I said, ooh, that's this week. <laughs> so at 5.30, we'll have our Thanksgiving meal here at the church. Uh, <clears throat> come be with us, and I uh, know we'll have a, a good time. Okay. Um, that. Also, our denomination, the Free World Baptist, always put out a free Thanksgiving prayer calendar and the things that are going on. Uh, Linda Markland will hand you one on the way out uh, this morning so you get that, give you a chance to pray for our folks and the needs that they have. Uh, of course, I know I don't need to mention this, but it's Thanksgiving. We have so much to be thankful for. Right. There's folks around us who, <clears throat> who have needs. And uh, certainly we have a chance to share some of that with them. And so as God, as God leads you, uh, we have there, uh, yeah, On Faith Ministries back here also who reach out to a lot of folks. So if you can bring uh, food, non-perishable, there is a list back there. I think it's still there of things that they can use and need. So if you would like to uh, help them out through our church, uh, please do that. Um, I'll save the best till last. Uh, have regular opportunities for our church. 10 o'clock is Sunday school. They meet in the fellowship hall. Then 11 o'clock is that service. Uh, Wednesday morning at 10.30 is our morning matter. So if you're off, not working, don't want to go to work, come be with us. <laughs> we have a great time in our Bible study. And then I also have a Bible study at 6.30 Wednesday night. Uh, we have a great time there. We'll get into God's Word and share uh, what it means to us. But God is doing it through our lives. So you can come and be a part of that. And I haven't mentioned this before, but it's, it's on my heart. Monday night, what time you want to meet? 7.30. We have an AA meeting. So um, I'll say maybe through their meeting here, maybe we can reach out to those around us. Uh, we do have an AA a, a meeting here Monday night at 7.30. So if you know somebody or like to come and give you that, uh, come be with us. And I think there's about two more things to mention. Uh, we'll be taking up next Sunday, the 20th, uh, Missions North America offering. And that's for our folks here uh, to help out. And to go along with that, uh, saw on Facebook that Ed and Rachel Good will be in Suffolk on the 22nd, which is a Tuesday. But I called and he was able to come. He's going to teach or speak to us for our morning manna on the 23rd. So, if you're off, if you want to take off, we'd love to have a big crowd for Brother Ed and Rachel to come. Uh, I'm sure they'll talk about their mission up at Illinois. Uh, this is not the time I want to be up there, but as you answer the call of God, you go where we send you, whatever time. I think they've been up there about a year, but uh, it's a little too cold for you, so uh, I'm glad they called Ed Rachel. They will be with us on the 23rd at 10.30, we'll start. And uh, so come be and support them. And again, this, this will be, uh, not only for them, but we'll go uh, to that mission <coughs> to help with that ministry there. George, yes. um, on that list that I'm going to get out, on the daily prayer, Ed and Rachel's on that this week, too. Oh, okay. Well, good. Okay. All right. Um, I think that's everything. And again, I'm going to say Thanksgiving dinner here. Uh, at 5.30 on Wednesday evening. What's that? We're at capacity. You what? We're at capacity on that. So if okay. you have to sign well, up, oops. Yeah, hopefully you've already signed up because we are, um, got a full, full house. 
So just be sure, remember that you are coming and be here and uh, we'll have a good time. I uh, will take up their offering at this time. I didn't mention our prayer list. It is printed in the bulletin. Uh, the number of those that are on there, the number of our shut-ins, and uh, that God will meet their needs. And bless them. Like the Lord, we're praying for them. If you get a chance to call, call and let them know what I'm thinking about.
for his painful sting. To them and to God be grateful that freedom does still reign. Unless, 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 and the list can go on and on and grow. Unless you're one of them, you just don't know. Soldier. He was forced to be a child soldier. 
He's a great friend of mine now, an evangelist, and uh, man, hmm, it'll make you happy to go to your house and know that you have water. Just something as simple as that. So, um, the battle is real. Um, I'm going to jump into this because I might just go over to irritate Bert back there. But that's, um, I'll ask for forgiveness later. Uh, and, and he knows. He knows I love him, but but I'm glad everybody showed up today. You suited up and, and you showed up, and that's what this is all about. Uh, I've been hurting this week uh, with so many, um, just so many loved ones that I love that have uh, that have burdens, and, and I know there's I can give them all the counsel in the world, but uh, just knowing the Lord Jesus Christ and knowing that He uh, uh, and that will be part of my lesson, just that He that He stoops down to our level. Reminds me of the old Gaither brother song. He stooped down to my level because I couldn't get up to his, and, and that's what this is all about. But uh, let's go to him in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, I, uh, I love you. I cherish this time, Lord, because someone showed up today, maybe maybe several, that are uh, that are hurt, and they need you to just stoop down to them, Lord. That uh, especially if they're believers, but if they're not, let this be the time that the word, just your word, Lord, that I can't do it. Scott Watts' word is no good. It has to be your word through your Holy Spirit to just dwell in them and, and just do business with them, Lord. That's what we're here for in this 30 minutes, Lord. Just do business with each individual. One might be depression. The other one might be anxiety or, or the love of a lost one, Lord. Uh, we, you're just so good. I know there's nothing you can't cure. Lord, we come to you in this time just to... just I beg you for the Holy Spirit just to... To, to begin to, to dwell among us in this dwelling. In your beautiful name, amen. amen. So, uh, as you see, or you might not see, they're pretty, uh, it was challenging to, uh, I wanted to get some, uh, my message, by the way, is uh, going to be out of uh, John 8, verses 2 through 11. And um, it's, of course, the woman called adultery. And I, and I titled this, Drop the Rock. And so, um, I kind of wanted to do an analogy of, um, you know, some, some stones over here. Because I believe that I'm either throwing that stone, that I'm either casting that stone, or I'm dropping it. And it's kind of funny, I have to insert this little funny story real quick. So I was, uh, in our neighborhood, they put a brand new development on. And I was driving and I was like, man, I hate to go to Lowe's and have to buy, have to buy some stones. That's, that can be kind of pricey. And so I told a friend of mine, I was like, I was thinking about they have a brand new, like, it's like a rock quarry in this, in, in the dwelling back in, in my neighborhood. So I was driving along and I was like, Lord, how would it look to do a sermon on some stones or rocks that I stole? <laughs> I just, I just, I, it didn't take long to get rid of that decision, but, and, and, and my intentions were, and maybe this could be a sermon in itself, because I wanted to justify it, my intentions were, it has to be late at night. Because I don't want anybody seeing me. But I will return them. So I'm going to steal, try to justify it, and then return them. And, and that could also be, uh, I'll save that for a uh, uh, for another time. But, um, but yeah, I call it Drop the Rock. And my three points are going to be taunting the teacher, testing the teacher, and trapping the teacher. And the teacher, of course, is, uh, is Jesus Christ. So uh, uh, let's get into this. Um, or, uh, verse 2 uh, through... Um, through 11. Early in the morning he came again to the temple. All the people came to him. And he sat down and taught them. The scribes and the Pharisees brought a woman who had been caught in adultery. And placing her in the midst, they said to him, Teacher, I can almost picture that sarcastically, because they were always challenging Jesus. This woman has been caught in the act of adultery. Now in the law, Moses commands us to stone such a woman. So what do you say? This, they say to test him, that they might have some charge to bring against him. Jesus bent down and wrote with his fingers on the ground. As they continued to ask him, he stood up and he said to them, Let him who, and this is a powerful verse, let him who is without sin among you be the first to throw a stone at her. Mm. And once more he bit bent down and wrote on the ground. But when they heard it, they went away, one by one, beginning with the older ones, and Jesus was left alone 
with the woman standing before him. Jesus stood up and he said to her, Woman, where are they? And what a powerful verse. Where are they? No one condemned you. She said, No one, Lord. And Jesus said, Neither do I commend you. Go from now on and sin no more. Amen. 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 That just that deserves prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, this Lord, this scripture just uh, it burned a hole in me this week, Lord. I wanna in this little bit of time, Lord, I just wanna teach and preach. Am I casting that stone? Do I not realize I'm casting it? Could it be at my wife, Lord? Could it be at loved ones when I'm when I'm being facetious or sarcastic or or trying to deliver your beautiful word in an argumentative way so Scott can be happy? Lord, if that's the case, please deal with me. Search my heart, oh Lord, just like David said. Lord, thank you and just got me to be uh, mindful, yes, of your time, but more mindful of just how powerful and good you are in your beautiful name. Amen. Amen. So Jesus was gaining enemies quickly and I always like to do a kind of a chapter before type thing. Um, uh, in Judea, the Jews were seeking to kill him. He was teaching at the temples and was pointing listeners to the glory of the honor of God. He was highlighting his authority as the Son of God and his mission, of course, to draw people to the Father and bestow the Holy Spirit on them. Word was getting around that he was the Christ, but some believe he didn't fit the image of the Messiah they expected, that they had learned about. And, I, and I'm just, that in itself, I started thinking about, like, you know, they, they would challenge him so much, and, that, and that's where... Um, my first point will be that um, I see it all the time with um, with men of God, with women of God, you know, just soldiers talking about veterans that Timothy talks about entangled soldiers, you know, and, and how does that look in my life when people, because that's what's going to happen. People that aren't where you are in your Christian walk, and this is okay. Uh, you can meet them, again, I told you I'm going to say it every week, where they are, to get to where Christ wants them to be. Amen. And that's what it's all about. And they are going to challenge you, I promise. I have gotten that a lot in my life. Uh, but taunting the teacher, the definition of taunting is, and I'm sure we probably all know, I hope, but it's uh, a remark made in order to anger, wound, or provoke someone. Provoke or challenge someone with an insulting remark. So just remember, when we're, when we're using this scripture, please, I think the worst sound, I was thinking about this this week, the worst sound that I think that I've ever witnessed in my life, the worst sound, the worst sound is someone trying to take this beautiful Word of God and all I can hear is to win an argument. That is not what Christ wants. That's why every man, you look at every other, every other scripture says love, love, come at it with love. Present it with love. I am the comforter. I am with you. I am your friend. It has to be. This has to be in love. And I know it can get frustrating. My wife will tell you, man, I, I can get super frustrated. Because I just, I, I called Ed and I said, uh, Ed used to have this beautiful little, uh, and you can take away my man card, but this beautiful little cute, yes, I just said cute. Um, it used to be a tough guy now. I, I think I'm growing out of it. But um, he used to have this beautiful little frustration. Anybody that can remember him preaching remembers this. But he'd get to that point where he's like, you know, he's talking about sin and he's talking about the goodness of God and he's talking about the fountains of just the goodness of what God provides and his gifts of the Holy Spirit. And then he'd be talking about that sin again and he would just get that, he'd kind of get a little pause. And I could just, I called him the other day and I said, man, I, I feel like I should get a trophy. Now I understand that frustration. Because so many people, man, we, we want, we want this gospel. We want it to marinate. We want, we want it, but there's some things you got to do. There's some obedience that has to take place. There's a daily reprieve that has to take place. And don't be afraid to reach out to people and say, Sister Jean, I, I'm preaching, but I don't feel perfect. And I would hope to, I hope to Jesus that her reply back to good because you are not. Right. You're called to be an image of Christ. I, Scott Watson, not perfect. Verses 2 through 5 say, Early in the morning he came again to the temple. All the people
people came to him and sat down and talked. The scribes, the Pharisees, here they come, brought a woman who had been brought uh, in adultery and placed her in the midst of them. They said, Teacher, this woman has been caught in adultery. Now in the law of Moses says to stone us. I just read that. So what do you say? So uh, in John 2 through 5, I love this, seems as if they want to teach the teacher instead of being taught by the teacher. How many times has this happened? You know, don't be careful with your knowledge. It, it, can, it can turn someone the other way. And, and, and their, their beliefs on a foundation that's not based off of Christ. Um, so in verse 2, the people are coming to Jesus. Uh, the word has gotten around. But here comes the bullies to trip old Jesus up. And I think, and, and I just, I got a lot out of this story. Because I'm serious. I see it a lot in my life. But, uh, and not comparing myself to the goodness of uh, to Jesus. But uh, it's interesting because you, you, you plug in with a lot of people and you try to witness to a lot of people. But it's tough. You've got to be different things. You've got to come at them different ways. But uh, they're trying to chip up, uh, trip up Jesus and his grace and his meekness. And, um, I, and then I, it, it, this is just my humor, but I started picturing it. Like he's teaching. Man, he's, he's in it. He's teaching. And he, everything's going good. And he hears this noise. And a woman's being forced, and that's what it is. She's not being just, hey, can you come this way? We have a matter to bring to you this so-called uh, Jesus that calls himself the Messiah uh, from the law that they know. They don't think it's matching up, and nor is he. Uh, I mean, from the people he's already visited, uh, Zacchaeus and, and, and the disciples and things like that. But it says, a woman's being forced and pushed around. Uh, and, and, you know, I think to myself, there's no doubt she's, she's nervous. She's scared to death. Uh, and I can just, you know, I can picture Jesus because he's Jesus. I can picture him saying to himself like, ah, man, if they would spend this kind of time, because he's trying to teach, here they come, here comes the bullies. But I, he had to have, and, and, and I, I, I was so rebellious. I know this to be true because this is the energy I want to put into God's word now. It, the defiance that they must have had, you can't think to yourself that he didn't think then. If they would put this in, the energy they're trying to do to prove me wrong into my Father's kingdom, they would finally understand that I am Him. I am Him. You know, and I think they, they really start to... So I just I always think about the, the debates that try to trip them up. But what a glorious report it could be if they would just... I mean, and that's what it's all about. When you find yourself getting so argumentative about something, step back a second. Seriously, step back a second. Even if it's the gospel, ask the Lord to start doing discernment on you. Take it to Jesus. That's what this is all about because that's what's going to happen. People try to trick me up all the time. And, 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 and I don't think it's necessarily a bad thing. You know, but maybe where they're at in their life, they're trying to justify a behavior that's not in the Bible. You know, so I think of that. But um, So in verse 4, they bring to his attention that she has been caught in the act of adultery, trying to embarrass Jesus and, of course, the woman. Uh, but I always say, and I'll probably say it every week, I just love it. Nice try, wrong guy. I have to think that's what, uh, what Christ, even in his meekness, I have to think that. He's like, you know what, nice try, wrong guy. And in verse 5, they, uh, they're reminding Jesus, now think about this, God of the law, Jesus Christ. And then they say, what do you say? Now imagine that. You're trying to trip, trip Jesus up. Isn't that what I'm doing when I'm trying to make the laws of Scott Watts? When I say to myself, well, you know what, man? Wine was in the Bible. Why can't I drink wine? You know? When I'm trying to justify my behavior to match it up with God's Word, it doesn't work. It does not work. Uh, oh, you know what? Jesus tipped over a table. I can get angry all the time. I can and road rage, I can do whatever I want. No, that's not what it is. That's you misunderstanding something and trying to construe it to the way you want to continue to live. That's not how Christ wants us to live. And man, I, you know, I, I know because I feel it in my soul today that it's like, wow, man, man, all that veteran talk and all that beautiful, man, land of the free and all, and it's all beautiful stuff, but man, this dude's beating us up a little bit and, and I don't mean to, but it's just, it's because sometimes I'm turning around the mirror you know, talks about it in the book of James. I'm turning around that mirror to myself. This is what I want to do. So that's why I have to realize, like, am I throwing these stones or am I dropping them? And, you know, imagine that, that he made the law. 
So they're trying to set up Jesus. And I just think it's so funny. And, and Jesus said, uh, this is what I, let me re retract a little bit. So here's what I believe. If Jesus, and I, I, this was a great commentary. If Jesus says, let her go, then he would seem to break the law of Moses. The old law of Moses. If he said execute her for the crime of adultery, then Jesus would seem harsh and perhaps cruel. Also, he would break the Roman law. And then they would have to get... So, you know, I just... I love this thing of, of, of what they thought they were doing. They're set out to trying to trip up Jesus. And meanwhile, there's, there's a woman involved who, yes, she sinned, doesn't say anything about the man. And it's not that he got off scot-free, but, but, but it's a good lesson just to ponder on. But testing the teacher... In verse 6 it says, This they said to test him, speaking of the law of Moses, and stoning the woman, that they might have some charge to bring against him. Jesus bent down and wrote with his fingers on the ground. Now, Jesus ignores the accusers. Uh, but the big question is, and it's always a big question, I bet you it's the number one, I mean, I, I used to all, because I've been in this verse many, many times. I've heard a lot of sermons on it. I have an opinion. Um, it is not a doctrine, but it is an opinion, and I've plugged into quite a few Christians, brothers in Christ, and preachers on this, because we all want to know, what was he writing in the dirt? What was he writing in the dirt? Now, I love what Curtis Lenton said one time. You don't know, I don't know, so let's move on. But if you know me, and I like being a little bit more chatty up here, I have to give my opinion. So here's what I believe. I believe that Jesus is stooped down, first of all. So I have to say that stooped down indicates humility. He didn't, he, didn't, he didn't react in anger or any kind of outrage. Let this be a lesson. That is not how he reacted. He stooped down. And I have to believe that he's pointing arrows just in the sand. And he's got their names. All right. Billy, Dustin, I don't know where that came from, um, Rob, whoever it might be, all these people, right? And he's just, he's right, and he's saying, okay, I got you. Listen, I saw what you did last night. You belittled your wife. So, here you go. I'll, let me just drop this down. This is in his meekness, and in his glory. And I don't think he was using his ammunition against them, but I think he was trying to teach him a valuable lesson. And that's why he didn't get angry. That's why he didn't get uh, uh, combative or defiant. Because that doesn't win people. And Jesus knows that. That's his whole gospel. That love is what wins. Man, I just, anytime I utter those words, I think to myself, how? How, Lord? I've got so many fights in my life, I can't, I can't count them. And now all I want to do is come to someone and say, hey, drop the rock, man. Drop that stone. You know, there's, there's honey in that rock. Let's bust it open together with, with, the, with the mighty might of uh, Jesus Christ and what He can do. That's what, that's what your kids are going to see. That's what your loved ones are going to see. You know, He didn't scream at the woman or those who brought Him to the woman. He just paused and stooped down. Man, that's a lesson right there. Stooping down for me? I can't, I'm unworthy. I can't do this. I'm filthy rags in the eyes of a righteous Lord. I love that scripture. I cannot do this. And then trapping the teacher, they thought they, they, they I really do believe they thought they had him. You know, they thought they had him. They continue, verses 7 and 8 say, they continued to ask him. And he stood up and said to them, let him who is without sin among you be the first to throw the stone in right? And once more he bent down again, wrote on the ground. I had to believe that, um, and this was uh, this was my whole point about the uh, the rocks, because this is how I believe with the parables and other things how Jesus works, because he steps. Our time is not his time. He's way ahead of us, and that's what makes him so great. When he says, "I go up to prepare a place," and he says, "Trust me," and he says. Wait patiently. And when he says all those just beautiful words that are in the Bible, I love those. Because I had to believe that when he showed up at the temple that morning, there's no doubt, I'll put money on it, that he showed up nice and early. 
Uh, my wife would be in trouble in that case. Um, I love him. <laughs> but he was looking for a place to teach. And I believe he saw those rocks. I really do. I believe he saw the rocks, the stones that they were going to... And he thought to himself, you know what? Man. Because I, I... See, people forget. I, yeah, I, it says Jesus wept. But I believe Jesus laughed. And I believe he had a sense of humor. Amen. I mean, he was human on earth. You know, but he was still... And the Trinity, the Holy Spirit, Jesus Christ. As God. Like it's just, it's a beautiful thing, but I have to believe that he knew the lesson that was coming up when he saw those stones. You know, he thought, I, there's just no doubt. I thought, I, in, in my mind, I kept thinking, and this is the way my, my humor is, but I was like, oh, oh man, these old Pharisees and scribes, they're going to get some extra credit today. You know, you're know, you, you going to, you, I'm going to get them. I'm going I'm to teach them a little lesson today. Let, the, let them step in their own trap. You know, and, and out of love, I do mean it out of love, that the judges, that the judge, Jesus Christ, passes the sentence on to the, the accusers. And in verse 9 it says, But when they heard it, they went away, one by one, beginning with the older, and Jesus left them alone with the woman standing there. And I won't get in for sake of time about why, why I believe they, they left uh, in order of uh, you know, the elders to the youngest. I won't get into that because that's that could almost be a whole, um, uh, you know, a whole other sermon. But I think the message here is, and, and again, so many people plug into me, and, and I'm very grateful God has called me to this pulpit. Uh, but people are hurt, and we need each other. And I don't care how frustrated you get or how irritated you get, and just be mindful of the ones that are always there. I woke up three days ago, and man, my heart was heavy. I was like, Lord, I'm, man, I'm, I'm just, I feel like I'm just doing things you want me to do. And I think I'm, you know, I'm just, I'm in your word and I'm praying and I'm, I'm reaching out to people and I'm just loving on people. But meanwhile, my wife has become on the, she's, I put her on the back burner, Lord. And you know what he said? Then it's time to start doing something about it. I picked up a little journal and I started writing each day. Just each day, it does not take long. So when you say you don't have it in you, through, the, through Jesus Christ, especially if you're a believer, that's what's going to strengthen your marriage. And I started writing this journal of just things each day, in the morning, before, right as I pray or after I pray, of things I love about my wife. And I'm not going to read it to her, and I hope she won't get in it. And maybe on Christmas Eve or Christmas, and I don't even know if she's aware that I've been doing it, but on Christmas or Christmas Eve, I'll, I'll do that. Because I... I don't want the best words to be said to you by me at your funeral. Life's too short. Life's too short. I want to tell you now. Thank you for showing up today. Amen. Diana, I love you. Beautiful voice. John, thank you. That's what the body of Christ is. Right. Brother George, man, how did you how did you throw out the towel? You had every right to throw the towel in. The church seems like it's just dwindling away, and now people are starting to show up. Not for Scott Watts. Because we're finally starting to learn what it means to just take that rock and understand that what I can do, to, I have a choice today. The Lord Jesus Christ, is making, he, he gives me a decision. I can do it in, in the midst of an argument where I think, man, I've got, I'm going to tell my wife, I, I got this. I'm going to get her on this. I'm going to trip her up. I'm going to trap her. I'm going to test her. But I don't have to do that. That's when the Lord says, drop it. That's another thing I started thinking about when all those, like the sound of each accuser's rock just dropping. Not in defeat, but because he had the humility and he was stooped down and he could look at them and they, they had to go away thinking, man, wait a second. We might have had this Jesus guy all wrong. You know, what do you mean the, the, the CNN and Fox can't save me? I don't know. Oh, that, can't, that can't save me? No, the love of Christ is what saves us. Right. That's what's going to save us. And just realizing that throwing the rock is no good. You have to drop it. I love that new song. It's a contemporary Christian song called Honey in the Rock. And I don't even know if that's the title, but I just love it. <laughs> Honey in the Rock. Just think about that. I just take, I'm serious. I'm taking away. The Lord is just stripping me of all my man cards today. He's just he's wiping them all away. You know, I just, but, but, but it's the love, I'm telling you. And I never thought that would be become like such a big part of my ministry. I'm sorry, I'm going to say it every week, but 
I gave a homeless guy some, uh, I'll just say a, a gift. It's not important to sound off a trumpet like the Bible says, but I gave him a gift. It's just beautiful to talk to some of these people. Can I hug you? I was like, yeah, yeah, man. Of course you can hug me. Dirty and all, come on. I had someone say that a while back. Yeah, I was going to give that person a hug, but he was dirty. What? Come on, man. Oh, man, are you kidding me right now? Man, I will jump in the pig pen with you to pull you out of the muck and the mire, to show you that if Jesus Christ did it for me, He can do it for you. To understand what dropping that rock means. To understand the, the true uh, uh, physician, the great physician. To understand I am the comforter. To understand I must be about my Father's business. That's not all just stuff you memorize because you haven't lived it. That stuff Jesus is stooping down to you and saying, hey, stop this nonsense. I want you to love. You're called to love. That's the unity of the Christ. Come to me. Come to me, the broken ones. That's the one I can use, Scott. I can't, I gotta stop saying no, Lord. I'm still drinking, Lord. I'm still doing this, Lord. No, come to me, Scott. Let me use you. You're not gonna see it all at once. Man, I love seeing it, and I, I know he hates this, and I'm so sorry, but my brother Aaron over there lost his father, and he's still showing up. That doesn't mean he's not in pain. That's right. That's, he needs that love. He needs to hear about this love. Not a bunch of things. I've had someone say this when my mom died. You should be over that by now. Shame on you. That's right. That's that is right. not the way it works. What do you mean you should be over this? I love Elaine Betts. I don't want to be over it. You know why? Because God, Jesus Christ, went to go prepare a place. And that's where she's at. So that's when I, I just, I don't know, it's so heavy on me today. Man, Lord, please use me. Continue to use me. Especially, not when I'm on top of that now. Put me in the gap, Lord. When people are hurting so bad, you just get on your knees and say, Lord, deliver them from this drink or this drug or this depression or just show them that. Start making a list. It's okay, men, to go up to your wife if you're going through some stuff and just say, you know what? I made a list. I'm sorry. I made some mistakes. Let me just can I read you something that just, it's a, just a mirror image of what the Lord showed me. My part. Not a list of things she did, but my part. This is what I did, Lord. I messed up. I didn't make her feel the way you made me feel when I was in a dark spot. So I lashed out at her, Lord. Will you forgive me? And all along he stooped down saying, yes, of course. And imagine this. He's been shamed in front of the whole town. The woman has been shamed in front of the whole town. The scribes and the Pharisees. But more, more importantly, Jesus. She's been shamed in front of Jesus. Man. So she's got to think. She's fixing to get scolded. She has to think. She's like, man, they, this, these cats have made an embarrassment of me. I feel as low as I can, as low as I can go. I've committed adultery. I feel bad. I'm going to say it on this pulpit today. I had to forgive my father for some things. I had to forgive many for some things. You know why? Because I'm not perfect. Because if He forgives me, what should I do then? I love when they say to Jesus, you came and fed me. You came and visited me in jail. No, no, I didn't do that. If you did it for one, you did it for me. So just remember that when we're uh, getting ready to lash out at each other. Because I promise you, and I've seen this happen, my, my stepfather and I had a beautiful relationship. And it only took one bad day with the bottle and he ended up going, the, the police said, uh, the state trooper said, when he hit the tree in Alta Vista, Virginia, he was going 100 miles per hour. Dead on the road. So, man, I, I promise you, if I come up to you, I did it to Brother Bert. If I, I called him the other day and I said, hey, man, something's, something's just beating me away, man. He said, what's up? I said, you're going to think I'm crazy, but I don't want to wait to say this. I value you. I love you as a friend. Amen. Doug and I do it all the time. Amen, bro. There's nothing wrong with that. Call someone. Call them and tell them, Mom, I love you. I don't care if you fight. Matter of fact, that's the best time to do it. You just had a disagreement with your mom. Call her and say, you know what? I'm ready to drop the rock. I can't hold this anymore. I can't hold this pressure anymore. It's something that's bothered me for 15 years. Lord, deliver me from it because that's who you are. Because that's what's going to build me into throwing that. Because I never got over it. I'm throwing a stone at someone that had nothing to do with the pain that I went through. 
I don't want that. And then I love verses 10 and 11. I promise I'm wrapping it up. Jesus stood up. He was knelt down. I just feel you know, stooped down in humility the whole time. Jesus Christ stooped down. Stooped down. And all her pain, discouragement, she probably feels like a loser. She was like, are you kidding me? Why is this man here? And he says, woman, where are they? Where are they? The ones that wish me bad? The ones that said, you'll never make it, Scott. The ones that said, hey, you'll never quit smoking. And let me remind us Christians of something. Be careful telling people, yes, tell them what you've been delivered from. But don't be drinking a half gallon of wine telling someone, hey, hey, uh, you got to work on that smoke and that's going to kill you. They know that. You don't think we know that? I used to be a smoker. <laughs> hey, you know that causes cancer. Appreciate you, man. Thanks for the love. No. I, didn't, I mean, come on, stop this. That'd be like me saying, hey, man, before you eat that Twinkie, just remember. Uh, <laughs> that's just not the way to live. That's not the way to deliver the message. I'm out of the love. If they continue to ask him, my buddy Eric back there works out all the time. He does these videos. I, I'll be honest with you. I can't do them. But a while back, I tried. I did one at the gym. And Jamie's like, be careful. You're going to be so sore. I was like, baby, you don't know. And then the next morning, I was like, oh, I'm going to kill her. <laughs> I'm just dying, man. I'm so sore. And, and I was. You know, I was. I was sore. But that's what the Lord wants us to do. He wants us just to come to Him. And guess what? Maybe today's the day that you get out of your comfort zone. Maybe today's the day. Maybe you've been doing something. Well, you know, Scott, I've been doing that my whole life. It doesn't make it right. That's right. Just because you've been doing it your whole life does not make it right. I used to drink, smoke, do drugs. That, that, oh, yeah, this is just who I am. I'm a man. I'm, I used to say, I'm like John Wayne. You ain't like John Wayne. Get out of here, dude. That's just burp. I tell you, I can't even barely shoot a gun, but I love him. <laughs> And Jesus said to her, he, he said, do they, do they condemn you? And he said, neither do I commit, uh, condemn you. Go, and from now on, sin no more. See, that's what, the, that's what it's all about. Sin no more. Does it mean I will slip or slide? 100%. But it means I know who to take it to. Because think about it this way, and I'll wrap it up. Think about it this way. This is what I was thinking about the whole time I was doing the sermon. The only one that qualified at all to throw the stone... Dead people. Isn't that amazing? Man, how does that not make you rejoice? Kneeling down, stooping down, and i got to come up here and, and just simple that the Lord has to say to me, Scott, give me that burden. It's time. You've held on to it for too long. Something that your father or possibly your mother or a friend or something like that, he stooped down. Jesus Christ He's coming down to my level. That's how much He loves us. And forget about coming down to my level. He died on the cross. He died on that cross. And I can picture each, man, just each, each one represents someone here today. Each little just represents Doug. He said, I'm doing this for Doug. I can't give up. I'm not calling 10,000 angels. I'm doing it for James Cole. He's got a minister that can use him. That's what the body is. We're each going out here. and it's Man, it's just beautiful. That's what it should be about. Yes. I'm, I'm sorry. I'm gonna, man, if I've got to say it a million times, I'm going to make it so cool to be a Christian. People are going to be knocking down the... What? The, man, what? We'll They're just knock walls out. If you're sit down. That's how cool I want it to be. I'm done with the stories about jump kicks and having long hair. Yeah, that's funny and that's cool. But what about Jesus Christ? How did you get there? How did He deliver you from that? How did you not, when your dad or mom died... Just crawl in a hole and die. Because of Jesus, that's how. Because Jesus Christ came to me and said, Hey, you're not, yes, you're broken. You sure are broken. You're bruised, but guess what? Bruised for his iniquities. That's what Jesus does. And he comes to us and just, he is the great comforter. And I want Diane to, um, and possibly John, if he doesn't mind, I'd love to listen uh, to the song. As I do, um, just as I am, yeah. just as I am, and I'm gonna, um, I'm gonna pray. And I want, if there's one person here today that just doesn't, that doesn't know Christ, uh, once I pray, I want you to, if it's in your heart, you do not know Jesus Christ. change. He 
stooping for you right now. He's stooped down. He's kneeling down. With every head, with every head bowed. And then I'll also give a chance for the believers just to come to do business. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, when I think of this song, Just As I Am, Lord, I'm, I'm not worthy, Lord. I never was. Lord, I thought I could do it my way, and I kept coming up short. Lord, they taunted me. They tested me just like they're going to do. But greater works, Lord, because of you. Greater works. Let them see your goodness, Lord. Let the church come, Lord. You've said something to your wife this week or a loved one that you just kind of, you're not happy about. Lord, this altar is not about shaming. It's about finally finding honey in the rock through you, Lord. Because that's the only way it can be done. That's starting today. I get out of a comfort zone. That's starting today. I, I call someone and say, you know what, Dad? I know we don't say it a lot. I love you. I love you. And that there's nothing wrong with that. That's, that's what's going to be the builder. That's what's going to build us. To love, Lord. Why can't we just love once again? I'm done casting stones, Lord. I want to be the guy that people come to because it's backed by your might. Lord, I cannot do it alone. Deliver me from these things. Something I've held on to years ago, Lord. Deliver me from it. Lord, you are the all-knowing, all-understanding. Lord, maybe, maybe it's a letter that needs to be written. If you'll honor it. Maybe someone can't. They, they just never really gotten over the a father's death or a mother's death. Lord, I know you'll. No word of yours goes void. And if I'm saved in you, then, then you're going to honor that, Lord. Maybe it's time to sit down sometime, sometime today and just write that letter, Lord. Maybe, they, maybe there's some, there was some unfinished business, Lord. And yes, while we know that they're with you in that beautiful place, that mansion, that mansion, Lord, streets of gold, that you just, Lord, deal with them in that moment. There might be a resentment, some anger. Lord, it's time. It's time. I want to hear the noises, Lord, of your people dropping the rocks, dropping the stones. I want to hear hugs. I don't want to hear pages flipping for anger, Lord. I want to hear souls being changed and conformed to the love, the image of who you are. Lord, be with us. Strengthen us. Please, Lord, strengthen us. Guide us not to lean on the ways of our own understanding, Lord. I cannot conform to this world because this is, it's but a blemish, Lord. Lord, just continue to work in me. And Lord, when I slip, and I'm a bad friend or a bad husband or a bad pastor. Lord, deal with me. And I know you'll be stupid. Because that's who you are. In your beautiful name, Lord.
forced to come to him. My heart was open to speak. But because of Spanish, I wish I could be as faithful as she has been. And I know it's not easy. Health problems and things going on. She's here. She's here to meet with the Lord. And folks, I can't tell you that if there are problems and things in your life, come turn it to the Lord. You'll take care of that. You'll open your heart. You'll open the, the things that you need. I can't express that enough. A lot of things going on today. People try to do it on their own. Uh, they might be okay for a little while, but they're hurt. Folks are looking for the truth. They're looking for the strength. And it's through Jesus Christ, it's through His Word, that we can get that strength. And then ask Christians to help spread the truth as we go through our lives and have the opportunities that God gives us to share His Word. Thank you, Scott. Um, thank you all for being here today. Don't forget our <coughs> Thanksgiving dinner on, the, on Wednesday be at 5.30. <coughs> um, and then it's <coughs> Ed Reach will come on the 23rd. He made plans to be here. It'd be great to have a good crowd to come <coughs> meet with him again and to uh, hear what God is doing through that ministry uh, up in Illinois. So I'll uh, be praying about that. So again, thank you for being here. We love you. Anything that we can do, if you need to pull one of us aside this morning, please take the time to do that. Uh, when, when God pricks at your heart, now's the time. And we're here that we can help one another. So we thank you for that. Uh, Dusty, would you like to close us out this morning? Sir. Sure. Father, we just thank you for the message that Brother Scott brought to us today, O Lord. May we apply that to our lives and not pick up stones, but give out love, O Lord. We thank you for the day you've given us. We thank you for the week ahead. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. amen.